She was in a place that she did not recognize, somewhere dark and threatening, and she was not alone. Someone was with her in the stinking room, and a feeling of dread twisted her gut into knots. Then there was a scream, a sound that seemed to come from far away. It began softly, as a ghastly keening, and then it intensified into a terrified shriek. Fighting fear and bed covers, Ellie McEwen struggled to find the switch to her bedside lamp. She prayed to God for blessed electric light and sat up, shaking uncontrollably and pulling the duvet tightly around her. Glaring pictures in red and black flashed like strobe lighting behind her eyelids each time she blinked. The images were so strong that she did not trust herself to stand. She desperately wanted to get out of the bedroom and escape the memory of those horrible visions. Still shaking, Ellie pulled on her dressing gown and stumbled towards the kitchen. A warm drink and some comforting music from a late night DJ should help. She managed to drop the tea bags and splash water everywhere. It's okay, it's okay, she told herself. I'm safe, I'm safe in my own home. It was just a horrible dream. As she plugged in the kettle, the back of her hand brushed the wall tiles and a sickening bolt of memory flared up. Her back to a tiled wall, freezing cold, and that awful something, just out of sight, but giving off those dreadful emanations. Ellie's hand jerked away from the wall, and her elbow caught a pottery mug, sending it crashing to the floor and dispelling her demons across the quarry tiles. Sweeping up shattered Demby, she felt normality creeping back, along with a host of other emotions, and she started to cry. She roughly brushed the tears away. She'd done enough damned crying recently and didn't need bloody nightmares to set her off again. It took her a few minutes to successfully make a cup of tea. The shaking was subsiding, but it was not easy to do anything with a snotty nose and tear-blurred vision, especially things that involved the use of boiling water. Clutching the drink, she tentatively went back into the bedroom. Huddled in the duvet, she felt shaken and frightened. The telephone beckoned to her, but who could she call at two in the morning? She had lots of friends, but they nearly all worked and she could not bring herself to worry them at this unearthly hour. She wanted a hot water bottle and a teddy bear. She wanted her mother back to hug her and reassure her and tell her that everything would be all right in the morning. For a moment, she felt a hand gently stroking her hair. Yes, Ellie wanted her mother back, but Florence McEwen had passed away only six months ago, six weeks before Ellie's live-in partner Stephanie had left her. Her reason had been to find herself, but the grapevine at Oneida's packaging, where Steph had been an inspection line manager, had taken some delight in informing her that Steph had taken Michelle from quality control to help her in her quest. As Stephanie had never been the kind to search her soul for anything, yet alone hug a tree, Ellie had hoped that after a three-year relationship, she might have warranted a little more in the honesty department. Memories and remembered conversations started up a familiar internal dialogue in Ellie's head, and found her once again agonising over Steph's departure and the void she'd left behind. That led to thoughts of her mother's long illness, her departure, and the more permanent void that she had caused in Ellie's life. Hell, it's no wonder I'm having nightmares, she sighed. It's got to come out somewhere, so why not in bad dreams? The next day found her feeling vulnerable and easily upset, she was uncharacteristically snappy with her staff and distant with the customers. She even considered bunking off early. It was her own flower shop, so there was no reason on this earth why she shouldn't, except she couldn't face going home.